Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin. and today we'll be taking a look at my favorite spec of Legion as well as Battle for Azeroth, heading to Shadowlands, the Outlaw Rogue. The master of Mythic Plus Dungeons, probably one of the strongest rogue specs for PvE of the last expansion, Battle for Azeroth. How is it looking in Shadowlands and overall how does the gameplay feel? Does it feel any better to play and does it look good so far? The numbers in the alpha are not finalized, so we can't really test the numbers with add-ons to really see how strong it is compared to the other specs. There's a good chance that Blizzard simply hasn't done the balancing and they tend to do balancing towards the end of the alpha cycle. Our job on the alpha right now is to test these specs, make sure things work properly and give feedback on what feels good and what doesn't feel good with the new changes to class redesigns in Shadowlands. And Outlaw took a couple core changes in order to hopefully make the spec a little bit better. There's going to be a few things we'll be covering. First of all, let's talk about the playstyle of Outlaw Rogue going from this RNG buff mechanic. That's something that Blizzard had to tackle this expansion. So they decided to make the spec a little bit different. Slice and Dice return to all three specs of Rogue, included Outlaw. The poisons also returned, which should create a bit more consistency, especially in PvP with Wound Poison. And changes to Outlaw, particularly with cooldown reduction, changing how Roll the Bones works, as well as adding an extra mechanic to give the spec a feel of spinning plates. The spinning plates playstyle has been a playstyle that other classes in the past have had. It's a spec where you basically want to maintain buffs and debuffs as best as possible, making sure they don't fall off or maintain the maximum uptime on your enemy. The first plate for Outlaw that will be spinning is the Roll the Bones, and that had to get a redesign. Roll the Bones no longer works off of common points, it's just a 45 second cooldown provides you a buff for 30 seconds, so you'll essentially just be committing more energy to re-roll it, which is great, it means that you no longer will be building common points and rolling a buff. But that means also that with Roll the Bones, it'll give you one buff on a 45 second cooldown with 30 second uptime. That means normally there will be a dead zone window of 15 seconds, but they also added Roll the Bones to be on the cooldown reduction mechanic. Through Restless Blades or True Bearing buff from Roll the Bones, Outlaw is able to get cooldowns back faster, meaning as you spend common points to finishers, which you do quite a lot of, you'll simply be shaving off certain abilities cooldown by a hair per common point spent. So you'll be using your finishers in order to get your Roll the Bones back faster. But still, Roll the Bones can give you anywhere between 1, 2, and 5 buffs. And in the last Battle for Azeroth playstyle, you essentially would want to build common points and keep it rolling until you get the one buff that you want, or any 2 buff, 5 buff combo. So how does this impact the spec in Shadowlands? And here comes, for that reason, Slice and Dice, to create some normality to the spec. Slice and Dice is a buff you maintain with common points. You build common points and maintain Slice and Dice the whole fight. And that's essentially the playstyle you'll have, together with Roll the Bones. If you want to think of it this way, Slice and Dice is essentially Grand Melee buff from Roll the Bones. Grand Melee gives you a 55% attack speed increase and Leech. Slice and Dice gives you 50% attack speed increase. So it's essentially as close as you can get it to the original Grand Melee. So in a sense, when you play Out Rogue, when you get Slice and Dice and a buff, you have a 2 buff combo in a way. So essentially as Out Rogue, you maintain 2 buffs passively. Or it can be three buffs if Roll the Bones rolls two good buffs. Or if it rolls five buffs that isn't Grand Melee, then you have Slice and Dice together with it. Hell, Grand Melee itself as a buff has also been changed with Roll the Bones, where essentially every time you use a finisher that isn't Slice and Dice, you get a set amount of Slice and Dice added to your current Slice and Dice buff. So when Grand Melee buff is up from Roll the Bones, forget about trying to maintain Slice and Dice, just use as many finishers as you can, as those finishers will essentially give you free Slice and Dice. So that is two plates for us to spin. The third plate is going to be the change to Between the Eyes. Outlaw Rogue is losing the passive range stun on Between the Eyes, which I think is a good thing. Having to go for an extra column point to gain one extra second on stun through PvP was never fun. And now the specs are a little bit closer to the other specs of Assassination and Subtlety by giving us Kidney Shot as a baseline stun, which I'm perfectly okay with. Between the Eyes is still an offensive finisher, but now it comes with a debuff. When you use Between the Eyes, and if they add ability crits, it does more damage, so it still has this crit heavy playstyle behind it. But also, when you use Between the Eyes, you now put a debuff on the enemy. That debuff makes it so your abilities have a 20% higher chance to crit that enemy, and those crits do 20% more damage. So now we have almost like a Blood of the Enemy Battle for Azeroth style baked into the spec. And that is the third plate for us to spin. 
So essentially Outlaw Rogue throughout your gameplay will be trying to maintain between the eyes on the enemy as often as possible and will be trying to use the most strongest abilities during those windows like killing spree and such. You'll also try to maintain slice and dice but with roll the bones depending on what buff you have for the most part you won't even have to spend globals to maintain slice and dice which is kind of nice. Roll the bones is going to cost fair more energy but it's not going to take any amounts of common points allowing you to spend more time and more globals doing damage less time rerolling buffs refresh and slice and dice and more times just simply trying to do as much damage as humanly possible. This playstyle on its own feels good because it doesn't make you feel like you're just building common points to reroll to see if you get the right buff or not. That means more time spent just doing damage, popping dispatches, getting kidney shots, using between the eyes and trying to do as much damage as possible into the enemy. The numbers are on final but the idea is that this spec should be a lot more consistent since essentially you have two buffs at all times or the minimum of all the buffs that you'll have should be about two. That means more global spending using dispatches, less global spend getting a buff up and running. So the spec overall baseline should do more damage since now your focus around the spec is just to get a buff, a slice and ice, a between the eyes and do as much damage throughout the windows. A lot of players have asked for Outlaw to be less RNG heavy. So essentially Blizzard kind of takes away that need for you to want to reroll or even the ability for you to keep rerolling buffs until you get the right one. So forget about which buff you have, roll a buff and adjust slightly to the playstyle, but for the most part any buff combo, thanks to Slice and Dice, becomes automatically good. Slice and Dice is going to be a strong buff at least at the beginning of the expansion since auto attacks are going to be a good portion of our damage and I believe auto attacks will continue to be a good portion of our damage going forward as well. And for whatever damage we are losing out from other sources we have between the eyes for extra single target to be able to have a little bit extra value into that one target that we'll be putting points into. With better gear Outlaw Rogue should be able to achieve quite high numbers with high enough crit and haste in order to cycle through your common points, maintain buffs at all times and with high enough crit we should be able to do even more damage to that single target during our between the eyes openings. Besides that Outlaw Rogue has a lot of fun abilities. We talked about the main mechanic but let me try to sell you some more. Grapple Hook is now a baseline 45 second cooldown. Everybody loves it and it's great for exploration. And now there's a talent of Retractable Hook that not only reduces it from 45 seconds to 30, like it does on live, but rather it also makes the Grapple Hook go by faster, which will be a better choice in PvP to be able to Grapple Hook surprise an enemy to interrupt cast a little bit easier or line up better CC or run away from enemies even faster. Another thing I like about Outlaw is Return of Poisons. Crippling Poison is nice, we still will have partial slow on pistol shots, but having poisons I feel like always felt great for rogues. With the Return of Slice and Ice and Instant Poison, that means we'll be doing extra damage, maybe not a lot of damage, but extra damage to enemies, particularly good against play classes in PvP. Speaking of PvP, Wound Poison returns. I believe Blizzard is trying to make Wound Poison something that stacks over time, so you'll start with 1 stack into 2 stack into 3, and at 3 stacks you'll have the most amount of healing reduction. They might go back on this in the future, but Outlook in PvP just went from having no healing reduction to at least some, which is overall a damage increase. The last thing I guess I should talk about Outlaw is the Blade Flurry playstyle. It has been changed. Blade Flurry will now, instead of having charges, it'll be on a 30 second cooldown, and it also will have its cap, we'll talk about it in a second. But not having charges of Blade Flurry, because that's going to suck. It's 30 second cooldown, it doesn't last for long, but it is now on cooldown reduction. Meaning that when you pop Blade Flurry and you go spending common points into buffs for slice and dice, stuns, between the eyes, finishers, it essentially reduces the cooldown of Blade Flurry. So now the question is, did the BFA playstyle of Blade Flurry give you more uptime on Blade Flurry or is this new playstyle gives you more uptime? Another thing to talk about Blade Flurry in AoE, yeah, it has a cap. A lot of classes in Shadowlands have a cap now on AoE. Only a handful of classes, like one or two, maybe three, have no cap on abilities, but they don't have some crazy AoE either. Sounds obviously bad for Outlaw, but is it not viable anymore? Hard to tell, it's too early in the alpha. Another thing to consider is all our competitor specs, like Demon Hunters, Fury Warriors, Fire Mages even. A lot of these classes that were competitive in AoE also have had their abilities capped in terms of how many targets they can affect. So all these other classes that we were competitive with in massive AoE trash pulls in Mythic Plus Dungeons are also capped. So since we are capped and our competitors are capped, are we that much worse than competitors? Again, just way too early to tell. We might need actual add-ons and sims and more data in order to figure out if we actually are worse or better than we were. 
But the biggest question we can answer right now is this cooldown on Blade Flurry, and is the cooldown reduction better or worse than the charge system of Battle for Azeroth? It's different, but I do lean towards saying that Shadowlands might be just a little bit better. It is nicer because essentially you can retain Blade Flurry almost all the time. Not 100% uptime, but almost 100% uptime. So it is as close as we can get it to a full uptime. On the BFA live, if you're playing the Dance of Steel talent, you'll be able to burn through Blade Flurry for quite a while. But let's say you're in a consistent fight, eventually you will run out of charges fully. So you'll be able to pop Blade Flurry and then have it go through its cooldown and then having to wait. So how long do you have to wait when you have no charges saved up on Blade Flurry? It comes up to on live 10 seconds. So when it comes to, let's say, consistent AoE, I would say the current shadow play play style and the way the Blade Flurry works, as long as you're constantly in combat, you will essentially be able to maintain Blade Flurry almost all the time. I don't think a lot of people will notice this change. I feel it doesn't actually affect the gameplay that much. Maybe in the metadata when it comes to whether you'd bring Outlaw for AoE or Mythic Pluses or if the spec does enough AoE damage, that might matter. The cap is probably going to affect the spec more than this change does. If we take a hypothetical position that Outlaw is good in Shadowlands damage-wise, I don't think this change is going to impact the spec all that much. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. That's as much as I could give you when it comes to playing Outlaw. Overall, I like it. I like it a lot better than the current Battle for Azeroth. It almost seems kind of more challenging or more difficult just maintaining all those buffs and debuffs. As the current version of BFA Outlaw, I just re-roll until I have the perfect buff and then just go back to my rotation. Here I actually have to watch out for the different procs, different buffs, trying to min-max my between the eyes window. So it's almost like there's a little bit more thinking goes on in terms of which abilities I want to use when and whether to delay cooldowns or not. I think it just goes from a just mashing your buttons playstyle to now being a little more coordinated with your setups. And I honestly kind of like it. Hopefully it'll be a strong competitor in PvP. But thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Let me know what your thoughts about the new Outlaw of Shadowlands. Does it sound like fun to you? And does it sound like worth picking up? I think for exploration purposes, definitely worth it. And it's looking like it might be a fun playstyle overall in the future. Thank you all, and I'll see all of you in another video.